What's up, guys? Welcome into another episode of the Michigan Recruiting Report. Our Tuesday show is going to feature a special guest. We will bring him on in a second. But before we do that, I want to make sure you guys like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel completely for free. Get updates every time we drop new videos. I just posted Brady Hart highlights from Future 50. A lot of commitments coming in. So make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like this video. And also, if you want even more insider Michigan recruiting information, head over to thewolverine.com, subscribe today, $1, two months, use the promo code UM1 exclusively for our YouTube viewers. Again, the promo code is UM1, that gets you $1 for two months. All right, guys, so a lot going on with Michigan recruiting. Obviously, the month of June was very busy. July could have some announcements, so we're going to have a special guest today, and that is on three national analyst, Chad Simmons. What's up, Chad? Welcome into the show. Look, I just saw you, man, down sweating to death down there in uh, what IMG Academy for Future 50, man, down there, but uh, doing well, man. No busy times for both of us, man, so yeah, just kind of grinding away here early in July. No, yeah, uh, Chad's been uh, awesome to work with here at on three and has a ton of scoops uh him and will fung and the rest of the national team do a great job for us on the network and obviously bring some of their inside scoops over to the wolverine.com as well chad let's start off there we were in florida together at future 50. it was very hot but a lot of talent on the field including top 100 michigan quarterback commit brady hart i mean you spent a lot of time watching the quarterbacks on day two during the camp. And obviously you've been familiar with Brady Hart for a while. We were even on the phone as the <laughs> commitment happened uh, behind the scenes for Brady Hart in Michigan. What were your thoughts uh, after watching Hart perform at the Future 50 event? Yeah, you know, I'll say this, EJ, probably for me just continues to get better. You know, I think, you know, I've seen him for, you know, I would say now, what, five, six times over the last what, nine months or so, nine, 10 months. Now, I would say every time I see him, um, just a little bit better, I think, from whether it be just accuracy, consistent consistency, uh, still filling out the body, getting stronger to the confidence level. Um, and I think for me, just over the weekend at Future 50, obviously our colleague Cody Belair made him the top guy on day two for us at on three. And uh, I think he earned every bit of that, had a very strong showing uh, day one, day two. Again, very consistent. And I think for me, that was probably my biggest takeaway, just continues to grow, continues to get better, uh, and continues to just, um, just always improving for me. How do you see uh, Brady Hart fitting in at Michigan, you know, in that pro style offense? Very well. I think, obviously, I think that style fits him. I think if he needs to, you know, escape a rush or move the chains on uh, a third and short or maybe buy some time in the pocket, he obviously can do that. But I think he's at his best when he has time to set his feet, square his shoulders, you know, drive the ball down the field and make some plays. You know, I think uh, the biggest thing for me about him fitting in is just that that leadership quality. You see that like in a J.J. McCarthy and uh, what he did there with the team played behind him and played for him, I think, you know, Brady's that same kind of player, that same kind of leader. I saw him in the state championship game uh, last December uh, when Coco won it all. And they'll have a great chance to do it again his junior year and senior season as well. They're a great program uh, on the coast of Florida. Um, but I think the fit is really good for him and kind of his skill set and what he does best. Awesome. So there you see some clips of Brady Hart. You can find that full highlight reel here exclusively on our YouTube channel. So like I said earlier, make sure to like and subscribe. So Chad, you were all over this recruitment. Let's move over from 26 back to 25. We're in the heat of the action of the current cycle and Michigan scored a big commitment over the weekend landing on 300 edge. Julius Holly, like I said, you were all over that one. I know you've seen Holly uh, in the past. You had the, the story as soon as uh, the commitment happened. What can you tell us about Julius Holly? You know, probably just one of those late risers, a guy, if you want to call it late. I mean, obviously we're talking about him before senior season, but in today's recruiting world, man, it's like, 
you know, sophomore year, big year coming out party, almost if you're, uh, or even, I'm sorry, junior, uh, if you're going into your senior year without the offers and somewhat under recruited at the time, it's probably already passed for you, unfortunately, in today's world. But Julius wasn't a guy that was getting a lot of pub this time a year ago, and he went into his uh, junior season a little bit banged up and uh, didn't play the full year and, and was really just kind of a guy that, you know, I had heard some people talking about, you know, body type, athleticism, potential. Uh, then I think once the season ended, his, his junior tape got out there. Coaches were on the road in December and January, put some eyes on him, uh, got his transcripts. You know, academics are strong. Uh, and then obviously the camp circuit under armor in February back in Atlanta. Um, I think all those things kind of built up for him and he kind of exploded uh, those next couple of months, you know, obviously. And, and he got all the offers and really took his time with the process. He wasn't the guy that because he got 25 offers in two months, just hit every school, uh, went and visited every campus, um, didn't take time even to talk to every coach. He just kind of started doing his his homework and, and having some dialogue and talking to his his family and his group about kind of what fits him, what were they looking for. Uh, and he kind of crunched that list pretty quickly and then took some trips and like you said, came down to Georgia, Ole Miss, and, and Michigan, really were the main three there, um, and Michigan won out. But I think for Michigan fans, as far as excitement, um, he's a kid that's going to get better. He's just now starting to kind of come into his own. Uh, he plays fast. He plays hard. He checks the boxes off the field. Uh, very self-driven, self-motivated, always working, uh, great in the classroom. Uh, and, and that's really why Michigan won out, just the combination of football and academics. That really, we talk about Brady Hart kind of fitting in as a quarterback in that Michigan scheme and what they do pro style. Uh, Michigan really fits Holly on the field, off the field, what he's looking for there as well. Awesome. Obviously, uh, you know, a big addition to the class that currently ranks in the top 15, Michigan trying to build on the momentum from the June commitments into July. One prospect that is looking to make a decision soon here is top 100 cornerback Shamari Earls, who I guess he's already made a first decision. He's committed to South Carolina, but he's making a new decision. Uh, right now, he's thinking about whether to stick with South Carolina, which seems a little unlikely, or flip to Georgia or Michigan. Michigan has made him the top priority on the cornerback board. Georgia seems to have some buzz here as we near a potential decision this week. Chad, do you still give Georgia the edge over Michigan? What are you kind of hearing in this recruitment? Yeah, I'm on the same page as you as far as you know him not likely to stay with South Carolina. Obviously committed there uh, back, I believe it was April. Uh, he loves Torian Gray, Shane Beamer, that staff, and kind of the chance to play uh, early and compete early in Columbia. But uh, obviously took that unofficial trip to Ann Arbor uh, in June, then closed out. He's supposed to be at South Carolina that June 21st weekend, ended up canceling that, going to Georgia for an OV instead. And, and since that visit, the buzz for me on my end, uh, on multiple sources, uh, kind of put Georgia in the driver's seat here. I think Michigan's the biggest competition for Georgia. Uh, of course, he is still on paper, committed to South Carolina. But you mentioned Michigan having him high on the board. I'm hearing the same about Georgia. Uh, obviously, a big athlete, uh, six foot plus, what, pushing 200 pounds, long arms, has that twitch explosiveness. And uh, the buzz is that he's figuring out, I guess, kind of what he wants to do. Does he reopen his recruitment, take some trips in July, uh, even take an OV to Michigan potentially during the season, then make a decision? Or does he just straight up flip to a school like Michigan or Georgia? I feel like based on intel on my end, if he makes a decision sooner than later, I like where Georgia sits there with the best chances to land him. If he does, just take a step back, reopen some things, go to a barbecue or two in July, take it into the season. To, Mich to me, Michigan has a chance as good as anyone at that point. But if he goes sooner and things happen quicker, I like where George is at. Yeah, definitely agree there, Chad. Seems like a decision could come sooner rather than later. But on my end, I will add that Michigan is doing everything it can this week to get him to hold off and potentially get him in for the barbecue later this month. Let's talk about another big-time target on the board, and that is five-star offensive lineman. 
Andrew Babalola. Now, Chad, you visited with Babalola before official visit season really kicked off. Stanford generated a lot of buzz, uh, seemed to be the heavy leader. And now it seems like, you know, Oklahoma, Michigan still have a bit of optimism with, with some increasing on the Michigan side. What's kind of your feel for this recruitment? It seems like it's a, a tough one for a lot of people to read. Yeah, I think that's just the kid that he is. You know, he, he's really all about business, not not about the self-promotion on social media, not about the attention, look at me. It's just not – that's not him. You know, it's not about really so much the brand per se or the NIL for him. Uh, I'm sure those things will factor in, uh, but they, maybe not as much as they do for other guys that we cover every day, EJ. I think with, you know, Babalola, I think obviously the, the academics are – Number one, I think the priority for him and his family, uh, I think they're looking at that extremely um, deep uh, as far as what they can do now, uh, life after football, the education, the degree, the weight it carries, the, you know, the, the networking. I think all that plays into it. And I think it's uh, to me, I think it's a two team race at the top right now. Now, I think. You know, by the end of the month, I think he's looking to make a decision somewhere maybe that last week of July, maybe into early August. I think he's taking, from what I'm told, taking a little bit of a break right now uh, and then kind of will get back on maybe next week, kind of really breaking things down, pros and cons. And for me, Stanford and Michigan uh, are the ones. You know, if you would have asked me, you know, going back to mid-spring, you know, I would have said Oklahoma – Tennessee was up there. I think Auburn's made a push still involved in this one. Oklahoma did get an OV in June. They can't be ruled out just yet either. But I do think Stanford with the academics kind of speaks for itself. We know we know Michigan uh, from a public school standpoint, one of the best, if not the best in the country uh, from an academic standpoint. So to me, those things really set them apart. You know, obviously Michigan on the football side, uh, a, a better consistent program uh, with winning, competing for championships, even developing players. Stanford does a good job, too, putting guys into the NFL. But uh, I think those two, based on what I'm hearing, have a leg up on the others. Maybe Stanford by an inch or two over Michigan right now, but I don't think he's reached anywhere near uh, the end for a full final decision. Uh, some big discussions still to be taken, I think, and and have between him and his, his circle, his family. I think Auburn and Oklahoma are involved but Stanford and Michigan battling at the top. So Babalola, obviously his five-star billing makes him a big target for Michigan, but also even bigger now with Hardy Watts spurning Michigan, heading to Wisconsin, Douglas Utu coming off the board and picking Tennessee. I mean, they absolutely have to find a way to land uh, Babalola, especially with their two commits, Caden Strayhorn and Avery Gash being more interior prospects you, you see the tape babalola more of that tackle that that michigan desires to close out their offensive line group let's head over to uh one more big priority target and that is top 100 tight end andrew olesh now this one seems to be trending michigan's way he was expected to announce a decision yesterday that didn't happen. Looks like he's pushing it to next week, the week of uh, July 8th. So, Chad, any reason for Michigan fans to be concerned as uh, Alabama and Penn State continue to be involved in this one? No, I don't think so. I think just waiting for the right time, right moment with family and people around him to kind of make it the biggest moment as possible. I've heard nothing different than what you have about Michigan being in a good spot and trending there. I mean, I met with him at the Elite 11 Finals, which was um, – you know, leading into the official visit to Michigan, he kind of told me out there, kind of painting the picture just in casual conversation that, you know, if the visit went well, that they have a great shot to get him. He's pretty candid about it. And, you know, obviously he likes Penn State and uh, he said Alabama's in there. He went and visited Florida at one time as well, another SEC school. And, uh, but I think Michigan's done a great job. I mean, tight ends coach Steve Casula and, you know, the whole staff has been from the offensive side has been involved with him and he feels good. And I think, one thing he mentioned to me out there and even coming out of the visit to the OV was that they make him feel like he is 
the guy, like the one guy they have to have at that position this cycle in this class. And he knows about you know, the history at tight end, uh, how they can move him around and keep him on the field for three downs and, and make him a receiver, a blocker, make him very valuable for the NFL. And I, see, I think he sees a window uh, to compete early for playing time and kind of be around great guys that push him to be the best he can be. So uh, right now I'm on the same page as you, EJ. I do think they're in a great spot. I don't think the shift in timeline uh, is any real concern for Michigan. Uh, I think Michigan's still in a very good spot. Yeah, like I said, I, I agree. I have my pick on Michigan. No reason to move it right now. Speaking of picks, last recruit we'll touch on, Chad. You put in an early prediction for Michigan to land four-star wide receiver Taz Williams. Now, a lot has happened in that recruitment since the spring. We're nearing a decision, though. He is set to announce on July 13, Michigan in his final four, but still a recruitment that seems up in the air. How are you feeling about things with Williams? Yeah, you know, obviously, like you said, it's been, it's been a while since I put that pick in. I think he's been high on Michigan from the very beginning. Uh, they've done a great job there with the new staff under Sharon Moore and how they recruited him early and, uh, you know, his connection with the staff and obviously Bellamy, the receivers coach and uh, different things along the way. But we know, you know, Michigan has picked up other commits. They're trending for a guy like Andrew Marsh. I mean, um, so what does where does that leave Taz? I think that's probably the biggest question. You know, does he have that spot in this class? Where does he end up? You know, he's from Pennsylvania. Uh, I think Penn State's definitely one to watch there as well. They're kind of becoming a team for me behind the scenes, picking up some momentum late. Uh, SMU, I've heard also mentioned to, to watch with him as well. Um, like you mentioned, July 13th right now, his commitment date. Um, that's one I'm still digging. I don't think he's made that final decision yet either. I think uh, he's still kind of talking to multiple schools, multiple staffs, figuring out, you know, who wants him? Where does he fit in at? Uh, but the school I probably would lean towards slightly today uh, might be Penn State. All right, Chad, uh, that's it for the intel part. Uh, before we get you out of here, I do want to ask you just overarching, you know, from a national perspective, what are your thoughts on Sheryl Moore and the job he's doing in his first year on the recruiting trail as the head coach at the University of Michigan and, and just thoughts on the class in general that they've put together? No, I think he's doing a good job. Obviously, it's tough for anybody to come in, uh, be a new head coach for the first time, you know, put at least half a, a new staff together, lose some guys, went to the NFL with Harbaugh, you know, the whole new defensive staff to kind of really – figure out, hey, what, what do I want to change from Harbaugh's ways to create my own new culture, my own new plan? Uh, you know, how do we recruit and, and strategize differently in today's world of NIL uh, and, and things like that? But when I look to the, the class overall, to me, I see, you know, a, a typical, you know, Michigan class, you know, obviously, you know, a guy like, you know, Nate Marshall stands out as an elite, you know, recruit in this class. Uh, I love a guy like Carter Smith. I've seen him play down in Vero Beach, uh, down in, I'm sorry, uh, where's he at? Down in uh, Fort, Myers. Yeah, Fort Myers Beach, Beers on the other side. Saw him play a couple of times, gunsling. But I think just for me as a looking from the outside in, I see just a typical Michigan kind of blue collar, you know, class. I mean, I, I love guys like an Avery Gash, you know, a Caden Strayhorn, uh, guys that kind of have that chip on their shoulder, that blue collar mentality, guys that lo love to go to battle with the guys beside them. To me, that's what Michigan football is all about. That's why they won a championship last year. So when I look at those guys that just kind of play that way, natural leaders, love to compete, love the game. A guy like Donovan Johnson, who I think is a great take for Michigan with a lot of potential coming back from an AC, uh, ACL injury. Uh, I just kind of, that's what I see from the outside looking in. Just a typical Michigan recruiting class that knows how to win, knows how to play football, and wants to play for the guy beside them. Thank you so much for joining us, Chad. We appreciate it. We'll have to get you back on this show soon. Sounds good, man. Thanks, EJ. All right. Thanks again to Chad Simmons for joining us. You know, Chad and Steve Wolfong do a terrific job. Obviously, we had Steve on the show last week. So if you want to listen to that, um, click on our little library and watch last week's live show. So remember, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, that interview was brought to you by our sponsor, My Perfect Franchise. Are you a displaced 
corporate executive or are wanting to put your career in your own hands, or are you an experienced entrepreneur wanting to diversify? Andy Ludicky can help. Andy is a huge sports fan and franchise veteran, having owned multiple franchises and businesses. Using his expertise, he helps others find their American dream through a very thorough consultation and evaluation process. Call Andy, put your life and career in your own hands. Best of all, his services are 100% free to free for you to use. So what do you have to lose? MyPerfectFranchise.net um, can help hook you up with your dream, whether it's uh, getting a Chick-fil-A franchise, a Dunkin' Donuts franchise, whatever you can think of. Just ask Andy and he'll give you the best advice. You can reach him over the phone at 404-973-9901 or email him at andy at myperfectfranchise.net. Your opportunity is waiting. Okay, so Chad kind of covered uh, a lot in terms of what's going on with Michigan recruiting lately. So just some quick hitters here before we get out of today's show. Um, one, let's go back to Future 50 really quick. Uh, and, and start off there. I had a chance to go down to IMG Academy for a couple of days. Chad kind of hit on it, but Brady Hart, man, had a great performance. You know, Michigan's quarterback of the future, top 100 commit in 2026. Uh, he was fantastic throughout the, the weekend, earning day two MVP honors. And the thing I like about Brady the most is he's one of those rare quarterback prospects that has a high floor and a high ceiling. And, you know, I talked about it in the highlight video I did on Brady Hart's Future 50 performance, but the thing that really gives him that high floor are the mechanics, which is a little crazy. He has superior mechanics for a kid his age, uh, despite the fact that he's only been focused on football for a couple of years. He has a baseball background. His father played in the major league. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's mechanically he's really sound in both his upper and lower halves. And then the frame, six foot five, 185, there's a lot to work with there. Now, the, the high ceiling is he could add another 30, 40 pounds of, uh, of muscle mass and weight to his frame pretty easily. He was young for his age. He just turned 16 this calendar year. So he was a 15 year old sophomore winning a state title. Uh, so that was really impressive. I think, you know, he has a lot of zip and mustard on his balls, but that arm strength will get even more, uh, you know, it, it'll increase even more as he continues to grow and mature and add physical strength. And, um, you know, like I said, even though he's so mechanically sound, he still has a lot of upside as a passer as well. Just, uh, again, having focused on football only for a couple of years, but the timing was there. The accuracy was there, the quick release, the, the footwork. I mean, Brady Hart checks a lot of boxes. And, you know, after that MVP performance, I would expect him to rise even further in the rankings. Um, you know, a couple other quick hitters coming out of uh, the future 50 event, top 100 running back Savion Hyder out of Virginia will be making a return visit to Michigan for the barbecue at the big house. Now, Hyder was on campus this off season. So getting him back for the barbecue is huge. He is uh, one of, if not the top running back target on the board for next cycle. Tony Alford has a longstanding relationship with him and his family previously recruited him at Ohio state. And obviously, you know, he's, he's very highly touted in that five-star range as the number two running back and number 31 overall recruit in the country. And actually at that future 50 event, Savion Hyder and Brady Hart were on the same uh, 5v5 flag team. So instead of the traditional seven on seven, they did uh, 5v5 uh, flag football and Hyder was on Brady Hart's team. So they had a chance to kind of connect and talk a little bit about um, Michigan. So yeah, I think, uh, you know, get it, again, getting him back on campus is, is big. I think Michigan and Georgia and a few other schools are right at the top of the list for Hyder early on. You know, another Virginia prospect set to make his way to Michigan for the barbecue at the big house is on 300 wide receiver 
Travis Johnson, again, another 2026 prospect. So the 2026 recruiting class, uh, Michigan is off to a hot start there. Obviously having Brady Hart committed, you know, the, the staff is fully in place and everything. So they have a chance to build a really nice class uh, in 2026. You see Travis Johnson, a, a top 150 prospect overall. Um, this will be his first visit to Michigan. He's out of uh, Oscar Smith in Chesapeake, Virginia. He's a bigger bodied wide receiver at six foot two and a half, basically six foot three, 175 pounds, really athletic pass catcher, long arms, uh, was a guy that was very consistent and built a great rapport with Brady Hart. Um, when those two were, though, all of them, you know, Hyder, Johnson, Hart were all on that same flag football team, which ended up winning the uh, 5v5 championship at Future 50. Uh, Hart and Johnson really clicked well. Johnson was a little bit of a security blanket over the middle, found him in the back of the end zone for a score. I mean, um, a lot to like about that connection. And having both of them at the barbecue at the big house and reuniting, I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I think uh, overall Future 50 was a great event for Brady Hart to get in front of guys like Travis Johnson, get in front of guys like Savion Hyder and recruit, start the recruiting process, hoping the staff get those guys to Michigan. Um, aside from, uh, seeing the future 50 event, I was also in Florida to spend some time with 2025 Michigan quarterback commit Carter Smith. Now we've talked so much about Brady Hart lately that I think now Carter Smith's flying a little bit under the radar, but he's so happy to be part of the class. He's still recruiting hard behind the scenes. So I didn't get a chance to see Carter throw he actually had thrown earlier in the week so he was giving his arm some rest before throwing again on monday so he's continuing to work with a private quarterbacks coach he was up in jacksonville uh, earlier in the offseason working with the same trainer as brock purdy now he's down um closer to fort myers where he's from working with a different private quarterback coach who actually uh, was the trainer of Gardner Minshew. So getting a, a couple of different minds involved in, in helping him refine mechanics and uh, get some more hip work and uh, just being a guy that's uh, a little more polished as a passer. That's the big thing I think a lot of people want to see from Carter Smith is can he take the next step and be that refined passer? Now, as a runner, he's dynamite. He's one of the best running quarterbacks in the country, you know, if not the best. I mean, he's an absolute playmaker. There's a reason he was the Gatorade player of the year uh, last year in the state of Florida. So, you know, you can't forget about Carter Smith. I think this is uh, quite the dynamic duo and they kind of complement each other well. And Carter Smith, you have a really dynamic, high upside athlete that uh, has a really strong arm through in the 90s uh, as a baseball player uh as a sophomore baseball player so the arm strength is there and the athleticism is there and then you kind of transfer over to brady hart and you have a tall athletic pocket passer that has that you know polish as a passer um not the runner at all that carter is but still athletic around and still athletic enough to move around in the pocket and you know the cool thing about carter and brady is they uh, you know, have a good friendship. Carter recruited Brady to Michigan. So they're, you know, really looking forward to getting to Ann Arbor and battling with each other. And there's no animosity or jealousy or anything. They're just really good kids that fit the Michigan profile that want to go in there and compete. So I'm really excited to see uh, Carter and Brady once they suit up in the wing helmet. And last note here before we get out of here is Philip Wright has set a decision date. So three-star wide receiver in the 2025 recruiting class. Actually, one of the guys that Carter Smith has been on. Uh, Carter was uh, on campus for the spring game along with Philip Wright and did some recruiting there. And, uh, you know, I, I think right now Michigan is still the team to beat. You know, Georgia is in there. Uh, they were named a finalist. They had him on campus for an official visit but I don't think they're pushing as hard as Michigan. You know, LSU offered, but they haven't made him a top, top priority. He took official visits to both Baylor and Georgia Tech this summer, but it seems like both of those schools are out of it. So I think Michigan is clearly the team to beat here. I've had my prediction on the Wolverines for a couple of weeks now. I still feel confident there. And, you know, you, you heard Chad talk about where does Taz Williams fit? 
That's the big question mark, man. Michigan has the lead with Philip Wright. It seems like they have the lead with Andrew Marsh as well. That's two slot receivers. You already have your bigger receiver in Jacob Washington. So Taz Williams actually has the same decision date as Philip Wright, July 13th. So, you know, I, I know some people have asked, you know, will Michigan get both Taz and Philip Wright? Right now, I would lean more towards them just getting Philip Wright. We'll see what happens with the Taz Williams recruitment, but I feel pretty confident in Philip Wright. And uh, man, he's a speed demon, 10, 4, 6, 100 meter. I think that's the type of game changing speed you need. I know he's just a three star prospect because he's very raw and not refined at all as a route runner, as a pure receiver, but the speed um, is absolutely fantastic. I mean, he, he's a uh, blazing out there so um that kind of does it for tonight's show guys i will be back tomorrow for the q a uh show so make sure to tune in get your questions in in the meantime in between time like this video subscribe to our youtube channel for free and also remember to subscribe to the wolverine.com recruiting changes daily so to keep up with everything head over to the wolverine.com use the promo code um1 sign up today one dollar for two months yeah again use the promo code um1 it's one dollar for two months for all your premium insider recruiting information all right guys like i said i'll see you tomorrow for our Q&A show.